everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Connected Success with me, Ashley Owens. 12.30 and 1 o'clock on Thursdays during your lunch break where we talk to the power networkers of the greater Philadelphia and South Jersey area. So I was just fangirling with this uh, Doc Miss. Wow. Okay, I've had this coffee today. This is two coffees in one. Oh. So I chugged this before I got in. You were here early, so my day just started. Great. That's all good. Welcome to <laughs> REM TV on Connected Success. I have Dr. Colleen Georges. Yes. You and I have not officially met until right this moment. Mm -hmm. And we walked in like a bat out of hell and yes. got very, very excited. Yes. So I'm going to calm down a little bit because I'm very happy that you're here. We were talking about some of the things that you've seen me in, but yeah. what I, I could talk about myself all day long. So literally this is the first time that we've met. Yeah. Um, it was five minutes ago you walked in. So I want to hear who you are, what sure. you do, and what makes you awesome. Make sure you hit question. on that part because that's people miss that sometimes. I love I love that question. Good. Right. Because we, we don't spend enough time talking about what makes us awesome. No. We spend more time talking about the opposite of that. Very and much. That's so. not good for the self-esteem. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Um so thank you for asking that. Um my name's Colleen. I you know my, Doctor, let's be very clear. Yeah, You've earned that doctor. Yes, I, Dr. Colleen. I, I go with Dr. Colleen because Dr. George sounds too formal and I'm not about the formal hierarchical stuff, but yeah, you know, I'm a life coach, I'm a career coach, I'm a speaker, I'm an author, I do a bunch of different stuff. Slow down, stuff. because that is very important. You are a life <laughs> coach, you are a speaker, you are what? Uh, an author and a career coach. So you do a lot of amazing things. Oh, and I, and I also teach at Rutgers. Do you really? Yeah. Rutgers Camden? Uh, new, um, I'm from Piscataway, New Jersey. Shut up! Yeah. Okay, yeah. So sorry everybody, Brunswick. just enjoy this meeting as we have it. <laughs> I'm from North Jersey. Where are you from? Bergen County. Okay, yeah. So I'm um, central. Yep. I can't even handle. Yep. I'm so excited okay, cool. right now. So you're not originally a South Jersey girl? No, I yeah. am a uh, poser of New York. I, I got you. Yeah, we're a little bougie up there, a little mm -hmm. entitled, and then I was like, I'm good. Peaced out, kind of Philly. Because the parts of Jersey are different. And only if you live There's here three. do you know that. Yep. Three. There's Distinct. three. Distinct. North, Central, and South. <laughs> so excited about this lifetime. So amazing. So, okay, so yeah. you have your hands in a lot of different titles. Yeah. So tell me the journey how you got to that to that, you know, to that career that you're taking on sure, now. Sure, sure. I mean, I think largely, um, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be in the helping professions probably from the time that I was in high school, I would say. Um, and then so in college, I studied psychology. I, I went to Rutgers. Um, I, I, I joke with my students that I've been at Rutgers for 26 years. <laughs> You're a super senior. <laughs> 26 years. Since 1993, I never really left. Wow. So, um, yeah, and so, and then I went to graduate school for counseling um, and did my master's and my doctorate in counseling psychology. I kind of went straight through. Wow. And, um, and so the original plan, I think it's always funny when we talk about the, you know, what the plan was, is very yeah. different than what I do now. I originally wanted to either work in a psychiatric hospital really? or um, I wanted to be a prison psychologist. And no I continued kidding. to be... Absolutely fascinated. Investigation Discovery is my favorite channel. I mean, that's like my, my hobby. Oh, I'm, I'm good with like murder all day long. Oh like, my God, I love I watching know. murder. I feel, why am I so morbid like that? <laughs> I don't know. understand. But like, you yeah. learn the good. So I feel like Criminal Minds and our, like, your doctorate and my knowledge into Criminal Minds is like the same thing. So I'm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So I feel yeah. like you'd be able to answer the questions and I'd just be able to get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like fascinating, but I realized. Um, so when I was in college, I did like this externship my senior year, and it was at a psychiatric hospital, and it was with a population. Um, many of the people um, in this ward had committed crimes wow. and, and were in this unit. And it was one of the most fascinating experiences of my life, but I realized it wasn't a fit for me. Yeah. Um, when I went to grad school, I had spent time in college working with teens and families, and so I thought maybe that's what I want to do. Wow. And the irony of a talk about where networking begins um, I talked to my advisor, I think it was like my first, yeah, it was like my first year there. I said to my advisor, do you know of any opportunities on campus where I could do some work with teens and families? Yeah. And she says, well, I don't know anything about that, but my, my friend um, who's the director of career services um, is always looking for an intern every year. I don't think she has one right now. Oh maybe you could talk with her and talk about, this was 1997, I just had lunch with Crystal two days ago. We've had a relationship all these years wow. and that woman changed my life. And I said, wow. you and Sandra changed my life. It takes one person. Yep. One or they two changed people. my life. I never was interested in working with college students. I never was interested in doing anything in career counseling. I didn't even know what that was. And that internship changed my whole career trajectory. Wow. And so I worked in higher ed for many years. Um, I was a director of multiple programs for first gen, low income students. 
started this little resume writing career coaching business on the side wow. back in 2008. Because there was a need. It's not like you just, you know, no, yeah, I loved that's the it. best part. Yeah. It's like I love doing it with college students. And so it was a hobby. And I was kind of doing this on the side for free for many, many years. And then somebody said, well, why don't you start a business? And that's kind of how it began. And so for then 2010, I decided to leave salaried work. Wow. Uh, and I know, you, you know you've launched a business as well. So, you know, it's a scary moment, but it, it was what I wanted. I, we, had, we had just had a son um, a year earlier. And so that was back in 2009, 2010, I walked away from the full-time higher ed career and, and the business full-time with part-time teaching. And that's how I got here. So how is business? How's it going? It's been really good. Really? Really, really good. Oh, who's your niche? I know you said you worked yeah. with, with college students and things like that, but who do you love working with? Oh my God. You know, it's funny. Um, I'll always have a passion for working with women. And, and, and I'll say that while a lot of my clients are men and I love the guys I work with, I just had a session this morning, you know, yeah. I mean, um, I just have a passion for working with women. My students are predominantly women at Rutgers um, in my teaching role um, because I teach at uh, Douglas Residential College. And so most of my students are, are women students. But, you know, my clients are men, women, I joke from like 18 to 88. So the adults wow. yeah. and work with any teenagers or kids. But, um, and I love all of it because it's different. Yeah. The base of my work is really about, again, it's, you know, it's career and life coaching. Um, but my kind of specialization is, and I'll go with this is what makes me awesome. Because I never did say it. And mm. you did say, remember to say it. <laughs> I'm all about self-talk. So my whole, my book, my work is we can set goals for ourselves, but if we're not working on the conversation we're having with ourselves as well as the conversation we're having about ourselves with other people, then it, we can derail ourselves really, really easily. Right. So with the passion that you have for, for service and for helping people, especially in a, I mean, I think now more than ever, everyone's having very much severe issues, maybe with the climate, the culture, yeah, whatever it yeah. may be. And I feel like that it is sometimes very hard to find a mental health professional or even yeah. a coach or somebody like that in, a, in a, um, what used to be a very sensitive topic. So when somebody calls you, mm -hmm. um, what problem are they typically having? You know... It, it, while it ranges, I would say that career-related issues are, are usually at the core. Um, even those who come to me for life coaching are still, in essence, career is, is almost always a piece of it. Yeah. Of all the years I've been doing this work, I can, you know, I can literally count on one hand how many people I worked with career was not part of the, the equation. Yeah. And I think you know a lot of it, and even the conversations I think about just this morning, it's it's you know, how we, um, how we interact with our colleagues, how people can have, you know, sort of a, a negative impact on us and our state of mind in workplaces, how we fall into um, habits of staying really late and taking work home and, and allowing our careers to sort of obliterate and over, overtake our entire lives. Um, and how do we reclaim control of our time and reclaim control of our perspective? And, um, you know, when operating with sometimes people who maybe are a negative influence on us. Um, but that also works itself into the life space, too. And so people are working on a variety of different goals in terms of relationships or just personal. A lot of people, often people who want to start a business of their own, I do a lot of that type of work with people. But I think that it's it's often career-related stuff and then things in the realm of relationship and maybe goals with like maybe buying a house or finances or things where, you know, um, it's it's all the things that are non-urgent issues that we set aside. It's all the things that we're passionate about that we never get around to. So when you decided to start this business, did you have a life coach? Um, I did. I did. Well, no, after afterwards. And so um, I've been working with a coach for a couple of years now. Prior to that, I had a coach as well. Um, probably a couple years into the business, I just really I wanted support with um, marketing help and just getting some ideas of marketing and branding and things that really weren't in the space that I was used to. Um, and then I, you know, hired someone to help me launch my book, and she's become my coach, coach too. Speaking of book, <laughs> nice transition, <Yeah>. Doctor. <laughs> So we have a book here, and it, it is called, you want to say, tell people what it's sure, called? Sure. It's called Rescript the Story You're Telling Yourself, and um, the eight practices to quiet your inner antagonist. 
amplify your inner advocate and uh, author a limitless life. So how many awards did you win for this? Because there's a bunch of different tags on here. You've won, I'm going to read it out. You're the Liter Literary Titan Book Award, the Big Book Award from Big, I'm sorry, NYC yeah. Big Book Award <laughs> winner, and the Pinnacle Book Achievement Award. Reader's Favorite Five Stars, and Books for Better Living Book Awards, Living Now. How the hell did you get all of these credentials? <laughs> Is this your first book? It's my first book. It's your first book, and you it's have one, two, book. three, four, five, five. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's an incredible... An incredible Thank feat. Thank you. You know, I believe, and, and this is why, one of the reasons I love what you do and why I love your show so much is because I feel like, you know, I believe so much in, it can be hard to reach out to people and, and network and connect yeah. and ask for support. Um, and and look into opportunities for yourself to kind of publicize things that you're doing. And yeah. but I believe in you know this was where are where are who where are the awards the reviews I I know that I'm going to need to find this information if I'm going to get a message out there. Um, and so I just you know I I did a lot of research. I applied for everything I possibly could. Wow. And I think like that's you know such a big important thing with. With, with business um, and having your own business or really just in the workforce and in general is that we've got to get good at, um, you know, supporting the work of others I think is so critical with networking, right? Is like, you know, just because, you know, you see other people who are doing things that you admire or you think are awesome that would benefit people, share it, you yeah. know, share it verbally, share it on social media, email your, you know, people you know about it. Um, but I feel like, relationships have really been like why I've been able to kind of get a message out there and have things work out well for me. It's all been about relationships. Yeah. Everything that I've gotten to do in my career has been largely because I've maintained relationships throughout my career that ultimately come back to me tenfold. What do you think, especially among entrepreneurs and business owners <clears throat> that are they're typically coming to you for? Um, you know, I think that a lot of times people are coming because they want to start their own thing. Um, and I'm usually catching people, not so much those who have their own businesses and want to amplify them. I, I tend to not get as much of that type of a client, but I get a lot of folks who are just, they, there's something they're passionate about and they want to learn how to, um, to start their own thing. And I also, you know, I think a lot of my work is with people who are recareering. And it's that's where connecting and networking become really critical. Super, very, very helpful. Yeah. So when we return, we're going to talk to uh, Miss Dr. Colleen. And I just got a look on you, Miss, because it's a fine sign of respect from my end um, about her tactical tips and practical takeaways in networking. Also, I have a hard question for you because there's a little bit of a stereotypical thing with life coaches, and I yeah. like to ask how you navigate through that. Sure. So make sure you stay tuned, and we'll be right back. <laughs> that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. If they were human, we would call them wise. They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write. The ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. Say we've got grit. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> 
I hope everybody heard my complaint of trying to get free advice from, uh, from Dr. Colleen about my trash brain. <laughs> Welcome back to RVN TV, uh, where we talk to the power networkers of the greater Philadelphia and South Jersey area. Dr. Colleen Georges has a book out that I has won about five awards. This is the first author I've had on the show cool. that has an awarded book. Um, and my big goal is to learn more about the kinds of people you enjoy working with, yeah. um, how you navigate through networking events. Yeah. What do you prefer? Do you like giving more education online rather than, and that's a networking yeah. activity? Or do you go and do you, you know, do a lot of networking events? And what is your networking style? Yeah. Um, and what has meaning? What's been successful for you? Because sometimes networking yeah. styles and activities will crash and burn. True. Yeah. You know, I, I, <laughs> I think that one of the things, like going back to kind of like who I like to work with yeah. the most, I love to work with re-careers. Um, I, I think it's because I'm often talking with people, and I, I think this ends up being a bulk of my my clientele is folks who are doing something. They've been doing it for five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty more. And we'll say something like, you know, I fell into this and I never really explored what I love to do. Yeah. And so um, the process of exploring that with people, really like digging up passions and giving people the power to turn passion into a purpose and a career. Um, and the process of how you learn about different things because it's not just a job description. You can't, we know that you're taking a class is good. Um, you know, studying something is good, reading a book, these are all good things, but you gotta talk to people. You yeah. gotta talk to the real people who are doing the work. And so, um, you know, I think that, you know, I, I operate similarly than the, the way that I encourage my clients to, is we go through a whole process of find the people who are doing the stuff that you wanna do. Start with the people that you, you know and who they know, right? You start there. Um, You're and up, not out. Exactly, and then, then you do the harder part, which is use LinkedIn and use the, these are spaces that are specifically for this purpose, but find the people who you go, wow, what you do rocks. Yeah. And then reconnect with them. And if they connect back with you, reach out to them and, and tell them, I think what you do rocks. You look super cool. This is why I think you look super cool. And I would love to talk with you about what you do. Right. Um, and like, I cannot even tell you the, the coolest things that come out of that yeah. and where clients have been able to successfully navigate complete career changes, like yeah. total big switches by doing things it's like that. It's the informational interview. There's no pressure on either yeah. side. It's just a way to, that, when I first, it's so interesting that you yeah. mentioned that. I think when I first started my career back in back in the day, oh God, it's like 15 or 20 years ago, um, <coughs> I started to figure out, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I had an idea, but yeah. I felt like in order for me to have an understanding of that process, I would reach out and say, can I just chat with you about right. opportunities here? Because if they like me, then maybe they'll give me a job. But again, there's no pressure in having that right. conversation. That was like when I was 18, 19 years yeah. old. And it still counts today. A lot of the networking activity that people don't re re uh, realize to do is that yeah. even if they're in industries that you want to get into, those introduction emails or introduction yeah. calls can be so non-pressure filled. It's yeah. just learning about that industry in its entirety. Yeah. Um, and half the time you're going to get people that are like, thank you so much for asking, how can I help you right. navigate through this? Right. And sometimes the ask is very different. So like the difference between a 50 cent ask mm -hmm. and a $50 ask, right? It's just the, the way that the ask is happening without yeah. receiving anything in return. Uh, exactly. or, yeah, in, in that, in that uh, space. So with your industry, because it is heavily saturated, yeah. how do you navigate the networking events, your messaging, so yeah. that way it's less than, first of all, the fact that you have credentials is the first life coach I've ever met that has credentials, number one. and But number two, I think with the value that you have, the book that you've written, there's validity behind what you're saying. Yeah. Like, my position, I made it up, and then I, pro pr I, I was that. able, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Sarah Rosenberg gave me the idea, but um, <laughs> the, I, I, I had to prove before I said, you know, what I was doing right. with two and a half years of just branding in that capacity. So, right. and then, you know, kind of putting, you know, things I added to my profile. But the goal was, is I had to prove myself in that yeah. way. And I feel like no matter what position you're in, you have to prove yourself. Yeah. So how have you been able to navigate that space in that way? I mean, it's, it's interesting because when I first started calling, I mean, my background's in counseling, so yeah. I'm a licensed counselor, but yep. I realized that the work that I really love doing is rather than working with like severe mental health issues, while I enjoyed that work as well, it wasn't what I love the most. And what I love the most is just the ability to work on really concrete goals. Yeah. I love, I'm a, a, like a, a structure freak. Yeah. 
right? Are you so, type A or type B minus? Because I'm like, I'm like, a, yeah. big, <laughs> who's trying to come down a notch big time. I'm 44 right. and I'm trying to take it down a notch, but, um, but you know, it's like, it's just trying, I, I want to do, I love to do work where we can yeah. say, here's, here's how satisfied I feel with these, these areas of my life. Let's start figuring out an action plan. What do I want? What does it take to get there? And let's figure out simple steps where we can have some success and then feel successful and then do bigger steps where yeah. we feel even more successful. Right. Um, it's the achievable goals. Achievable goals. Yeah. And so I, so when it, but when it comes to the space itself, like life coaching, when I first started like using the term life coach, yeah. it was really uncomfortable for me. In fact, because I was also, I'm also a career coach, I would often just say I'm a career coach because I felt weird saying yeah, yeah. life coach. I'm curious. Connotation. Yeah. I, I've really It's an started, unfair stigma. It is an no, unfair stigma based off right. of, you know, in, in that capacity, but it happens. It's just, it you know, it's just like anybody saying that you're a real estate or a financial planner. Yeah, you have to explain it. I find right. that I... I explain when people, you know, even sometimes before they ask me, you know, mm -hmm. I'll just say, you know, this is how life coaching, career coaching are a bit different than counseling, you know, and explain what that means and explain what my approach is. But I think when it comes to working with, um, working with groups or working with individuals, whenever I'm talking to a prospective client about a speaking engagement yeah. or individual work, um, you know, I had a, a before my, my client um, session this morning, I had like an intro call and, I don't hard sell anybody. Yeah. Like I just I don't believe in it. It's yeah. not me. Don't chase. Yeah. You have to be yourself. Whoever you are, people will see right through you. So always be exactly who you are. Right. Your quirks, all the ridiculousness that comes with that. Like I'm all right. about being authentic. And I'm never gonna try to sell you anything. I'm just gonna tell you this is what I do. I'm gonna answer any questions you have. I'm gonna try to give you as much information as I can about what the process looks like. I'm not gonna lie to you about, oh, we can do fix this problem in 20, no, yeah. it don't work like that. You know, when I, when I was just doing career coaching, yeah. I'd often get questions like, you know, what's your success rate? Right. And, you know, um, tell me the percentage of people that you work with that, you know, land, how many weeks that, I'm just like, it depends on the person. Yeah. Like, it depends yeah. on what you're doing. It depends on what we do together. Right. There's not like, I'm not gonna lie to you and make up formulas and things like that. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I think that's how I've navigated the space. Yeah. If I'm a fit and we're a fit, you'll know. And if we're not, it's okay. And if you feel like you need support with something that I can't give you, I will tell you who to talk to. Perfect. Like always, I will send you to people. If I can't help you with something, I've got lots of other life coaches I know. I've got therapists I know. I've got other career coaches and resume writers and people that I know. And I'll always refer you to people. Um, I think we have to not be afraid of our competition. We have to support people. Because when you're trying to be competitive with every people see it, they yeah. feel it, yeah. and you feel it in your bones. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's full of you're full of it. Yeah, yeah. So now, when you, I think it was beautifully executed. So when you are networking, who do you like networking with? So who's a strategic partner for you? So that is typically defined based yeah. off of people that you can share clients with that also share the same target market. Yeah. So for example, real estate agent and a divorce lawyer would be great yeah. <laughs> strategic you're partners, right? right? right. <laughs> because right. you're either downsizing or selling, yeah. whatever it may be. So. In your, in you know, who do you yeah. like networking with? You know, it's funny. I, I wrote resumes for twenty something years, and I stopped writing them about a year and a half ago, largely because of the time commitment that they are. And once the coaching and the speaking built up, and I yeah. and I liked that a bit more, I was like, well, something has to go here. So. I have a lot of resume writer friends that, you know, I, back when, even when I was writing resumes, if, if I was too booked, I could tell you, well, you can reach out to Jen and Michelle and Crystal and these folks and, and, and give, you, you know, give people their information. The resume writers, absolutely, especially now that I'm not doing that work anymore. Therapists, mm -hmm. because um, I think it's, you know, again, oftentimes people reach out to life coaches because they, in some cases, because they're looking for counseling. Mm -hmm. And I will never tell you I am going to do something that I can't really provide for you. Even if I, I technically have the background, um, I'm all about boundaries and parameters. You know, it's like, I know what work I'm great at. I know what work I love to do. And if it's a fit, it's a fit. If it isn't, I like to have therapists that I can refer people to. 
Um, you know, I think also in the range of knowing some folks who are really good at, like I, I, I know a couple people who are really, really good at, once you have a business, how to market it and how to be really good at um, building your clientele. Whereas while I can help you with that, um, that's it's really not my niche area. Yeah. Um, I can be supportive to a point. And once I reach a point where that's not helpful anymore, I've got folks I can send you to that really do that kind of stuff. They can they can tell you how to grow your business. Love so that. I love that. And when you speak, what topics do you talk on? All things uh, around positive psychology. I get to talk a lot about the rescripting now, which is really it's in the realm of positive psychology. So a lot of things about self-talk, mm -hmm. communication, conflict resolution. Um, and who do you talk to? A lot of um, like who, do, like who yeah, hires who you to clients. speak? Yeah, who hires you to speak? I do a lot of staff development, colleges and universities a lot because my background yeah. is in that area, my network is in that yeah. area, yeah. so um, much like many industries, higher ed, everybody knows everybody, so yeah. it's like... Very incestuous. Very incestuous. <laughs> so even it's if like it's like staffing, like totally. staffing agencies are the same way. Yeah, so a lot of, like my, my husband works at Middlesex County College, yeah. I've, I would say a teach at Rutgers, my background is there, I get a lot of gigs over there. Good, um, good. And, you know, corporations certainly yeah. as well um, to to help people with marketing themselves on paper yeah. um, in interviews because obviously, you know, the resume writing, I, I may not write them anymore, but I still help people navigate the coaching through how do you do that. Um, I work with companies who are going through um, mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. to help people basically talk about how oh, to God, manage. Where were you four or five years ago? It's tough stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's scary. So we are done. <gasps> oh my goodness. No. I know. Can you do me a favor? It's the worst. I'm going to talk to you. I get like 17 people I want to introduce you to. So before, after, in between sure. sessions, I just need to do me a favor. Look into that camera right there and tell yeah. people how they can find you. So you can find me at www.colleen, that's C-O-L-L-E-E-N, George's G-E-O-R-G-E-S dot com. Um, all of my coaching services, speaking information, book stuff, and all the, the crazy things I do, they're on there. Um, and yeah, for anybody who's looking for a speaker for something, staff development, something to motivate staff, deal with communication, conflicts, all that kind of stuff. Hang out with that. Dr. Colleen. Make sure you pick up her book on... <laughs> oh, it's on Amazon. Ah, Amazon. There we it's go. On Amazon. Make sure you pick up her book. Is this you? Are you an off-Broadway singer? No, that's my... My forward writer is Judy Torres Son of, of Freestyle Music. Son of a gun. All right, everybody. <laughs> please make sure you hang out with Dr. Colleen Georges. Uh, make sure you follow us next week. If you'd like to be a guest on Connect to Success, make sure you reach out to me, Ashley at AshleySys.com. We'll get you on the program. Stay tuned next week where we talk to the next Power Networker of the greater Philadelphia and South Jersey area. And thanks for joining us. Have a great day.